I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper. Would it make any difference? Would it change for the better if I wrote you a poem? If I posted a letter? Welcome back to Railroads Online. This is episode two. Now, I think it's been about eight or nine days since episode one because we're actually about eight or nine days before any uploads really. We've just been pretty busy with work and life stuff. But I've been a little bit busy with the yard but we'll get into that a little bit. So I have Betsy here at the moment with some logs and I have a firewood depot which I was having a lot of issues with actually getting it to create my wood. <laughs> so I, before I did this recording, I actually read up on it because I really don't like reading up on things. I like to learn as I play, it makes it more exciting for myself. But I get to a point sometimes where I'm just like, I've got no idea what's going on. So read up on it and what the go is, even though I got an empty pile there, I got all of my cordwood full in there. It will not actually create any more logs until that pile is gone, that pile is gone, and then this pile gets to 95. So when the last pile gets to 95, then it will create five more for each stack, and then it will stop again. And this is like really stupid, I don't know if this is intended or if it's like maybe a bug. So this one will go back to 100, so I'll take another five from there again put that one back to 100 and then another 5 for all the other stacks so they will go to 10 and then it will stop again. So really annoying. So basically if any piles are at 100 it will not create any more. So yeah, bit annoying. Hopefully they can you know work something better out with that one. But we'll pop the brake on there, take you out and we'll have a quick look at the map with the yard. So down at the freight depot, I do have my little yard here, so I've got quite a few tracks there, but I think I may have to actually shorten this one here, maybe have that one as a dead end. Um, probably could join it because I'm going to have to cut all of these back because with my passing track there, I've actually ran into a hill and yeah, I don't really want to have any gradients for my yard. So I'll cut all that back and then hopefully I could swing across and then that'll one, that one will head over to the oil field there. And my other track that sweeps to the right there, probably hug the mountain up along here. And this area here is quite low compared to the rest. So if I can get up there in time, maybe a three degree grade, I should be able to pop over the top of that and then head over to the smelter there. If that doesn't work, I'll be hugging the mountains along here all the way around, go up and down and then cross over to this mountain and over that way. So that's for another episode. This episode, I'm going to be heading to the sawmill to sort out my track for the, what is it? The beams and the lumber track for the beams and the lumber. So with my original build I did have the groundwork going there because I was going to sweep around but then when I was actually building the track this is the reason why this looks <laughs> really terrible is because I wanted to put a junction in there so I kind of tried to straighten that junction will go there it will sweep around and probably across through this pond and then back onto the main line there. That's my plans anyway, but we'll get rid of the groundwork because that looks hideous. 
So does my truck actually. <laughs> cool. And over there is where I have that track that diverges over that way. So yeah, I don't know if I can slowly climb up maybe three degrees and then over there you see the little divot. I'll get out of the way of that building. Yeah, so over there. So where, whether the track can actually reach high enough to actually go over there, I don't know. If not, then it's going to be the long way around all of those mountains up and down. But over here I brought a bunch more flat cars. So obviously I got the T1s that I had from episode 1. I've also brought a bunch of the tier 2 which is for the lumber, the raw iron and the rail beams. And I've also brought a few of the tier 3 here which is for the cordwood and the oil barrels. And if we run all the way over here we do have an engine house. If we pop these doors open we will find the Eureka. So I've brought the Eureka now. It's a very nice little loco, it's a 440. So excited to have this one again in this playthrough. Not like I actually made it far through my first one. <laughs> but this one is named Bella, short for Isabella. And she's the Angie Angan. So the story behind the Angie Angan in the quick version is at work. Some squawker was going to write the angry engine and she can't spell so the Angie Angan was born. But when I actually brought this they did not give me any firewood so first thing is first we need to grab Betsy and we'll lug Bella down to the firewood depot there so we can actually get her going. Alrighty got little Betsy on the way. So I've also brought a water tower here. Uh, I did originally delete that water tower but because that's part of the default when I actually reloaded my game it came back so I might just get rid of the new one that I built. We also have our little sand house. Again I haven't need, had the use to uh, use any sand yet so see what the future holds with that. And I'm pretty sure I put them a bit too close to the track so might need to relocate them a little bit further back. But heading up to Bella now and once we got her all fired up and going we'll be coupling up to the tier 2 wagons and taking them to the sawmill and we'll quickly slow down before we smash into good old Bella Ruppy. Cue and get you out and for this one we just pop you up and then nothing in that so when we bring it up we just stick a pin in it. Now we'll leave the brakes on. And another thing I also did is created a macro because when you jump into the loco always defaults to that and you always have to move the camera and then you know your mouse cursor is always in a random place. So I made a macro that when I press 1 moves my camera and moves my cursor to the whistle makes my life so much easier because you know even something like a default camera and location of the mouse whistle is not something big when you're constantly jumping in doing that it's just extremely tedious after a while so all done for me it's amazing but we'll couple up we'll couple up a bit slower oh, sorry Bella Betsy did it get you all ready shove the pin in there and we'll release the brakes happy days all excited for your new job Bella but we will get going So we'll stop here 
Yeah, about there will do. It's good enough. Cool. Uh, I might chuck some more wood in. Good old Betsy here. Probably running low. Huh? Well, still 50. It's all good. Uncouple you. Where is it? Why? Is that? There it is. Pop you down. And brakes would be a good thing. Because do not want Bella running away on me. And I'll probably just pop Betsy back over there with the logs there. So I shall be back in a jiffy. Alrighty, so Betsy's all parked up again. And first things first, we will grab some of this. And we'll get Bella Raw fired up. So we'll open you up, chuck you in there. And we'll let the pressure build up. QQ, so I hope Betsy does not mind that I'm shoving my wood in Bella's firebox. She's still loved. She's now my shunter around the yard, so hopefully she'll be fine with it. Nah, she's up. Uh, where the hell did she go? What the fuck? Well, I must say that was extremely creepy. Hmm, might put that down to a, a guilty conscience. But anyway, we will cut here. Bella's like glitching out graphically, so... I may fill up the tender with some wood and then I might restart the game just to try and get rid of those graphic glitches because that's going to annoy me. But I'll see you shortly. Alrighty, and welcome back. So, good old Bella here. She took pretty much all of my wood in her tender. So now I'm empty. And what I've done is originally I was just going to take the tier 2 flat cars to the sawmill so I could fill those up with uh, beams or whatever but now that I'm out of wood I have got to Betsy there to do a little bit of shunting and I've got the tier 3 ones up there because I'm going to fill up 3 for the cordwood at the logging camp just so I can get some more firewood going but we're on our way now so don't want to go too fast and make sure I check my junction so they're looking all good. So a pretty long train from what I'm used to anyway. But we'll head to the sawmill. I was originally just going to go to the logging camp, fill up these three with cordwood, but I might do that after the episode itself. So I'll head to the sawmill, do the junction up there. And am interested in some of these kinks because that one is quite tight. Yeah, so I'm going to have to fix that. I'll get rid of some of these trees because they're way too close. But we'll make sure nothing derails. Because that wouldn't be good. Yeah, I watched the uh, live stream from Heist. I think he did it like two or three weeks ago. Uh, it was, had some information about some signs and all that they're going to be bringing in. So... You'll be able to, you know, set up some speed signs and all that. Not like you can actually see what speed you're doing, but it'd be nice to, you know, have the look of a finished and uh, well-built railway. Well, probably not well-built for mine, but we'll see how mine actually does turn out. I think that kink is a little too sharp as well. Could probably easily just curve that whole bridge, make it a bit more smoother. I don't know, maybe episode 3 I might just come along and fix this track. Because I'd rather fix the tracks that I kind of build straight away rather than, you know, building half of the freaking railway around the map and then going along and fixing everything. So there's another kink. Yeah, that one was pretty bad. But still on the rails. That's always a good sign. But, yeah. It's such a zen moment when you're just looking back at the, all the cars zigzagging around. <laughs> I think that's one thing that I like about this game is, you know, when I play Train Sim 20XX or Train Sim World, I'm always first person. I don't believe in third person 
simulator games, but it's kind of nice to actually, you know, enjoy the third person. I actually would, wouldn't mind doing first person in this game, but it's quite annoying. But we'll stop up here. My cylinder cocks on. Nope, I don't think they are. Alrighty, so stop here and we'll have a little surveillance of the area. So I'll probably put the junction probably about here. Yeah, there should be plenty of uh, space really. And then we'll have it loop over that way and through. And then it'll probably come around the side of the pond and join up again with that bridge. So we'll need another junction over that way. So we will get to going with all of this. I'll have to demolish some of my rails. And when I did this track as well, it's currently just on flat ground, so I probably leave that on flat ground, but for over here, I'd actually want it to be on some fill because I want to make sure it's level. To what height, I do not know yet. Um, yeah, so I might make room for the junctions, pop the junctions down, and then I'll work out the fill. Alrighty, well, that is all complete. Not completed very well, but just for the purpose of being relatively quick for a video, it's good enough. So I'll readjust everything off camera probably. But let's see if it actually works. I'm oh, probably gonna need some wood in Bella here. It's been sitting there for a bit. Alrighty. Change your mind, trying to save your time. In case you're thinking about breaking out the bucket list, girl, you can skip this funny business. Cause up there it's complicated and overrated. And it's alright by me. I got everything that I need. But there is breakneck, paycheck. Alrighty, so that's all good. Did not derail. So I'm just gonna head over there and fill up my beams before I head out of this video and head up to the logging camp. So we'll jump in here and we'll have a, a bit of a closer look once I get some speed going. But yeah, I do need to fix a few things. It was only a rough job, so there's some um, tracks that are a bit swervy. This one here could easily redo that and make it dead straight. Bit of lag. Not to worry, not to worry. But yeah, easily do that one straight and then curve around. Also, the one over there, it's probably a bit too sharp for my liking. But going slow, it's no big drama. But when I get to the other locos, 
I've never actually driven them, so I'm not sure how they will go. I'm pretty sure some of them are longer. Could be wrong, but yeah, time will tell. But anyway, I thank you again for watching. So if you like this content, please like and also subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.